What is the highest resolution image you've ever seen? Really think about it. Maybe the all-time highest pixel count image you have seen might have been capped out at 2K or 4K, as most digital cinema projectors do not display at resolutions beyond 2K on the big screen. Maybe you were able to examine an ultra-high definition photograph in an editing software, zooming into parts of an image to examine the details of the shot. Yet, it's fairly likely that you only have a full HD screen, like most other people. Thus, everything you've seen at home technically caps out about 1920 by 1080, or some of you have 4K TVs. A digital file can exceed the monitor's resolution by a significant margin. Take this unassuming mosaic of a Romanesco broccoli, for instance. Regardless of your display resolution or this video's compression, this odd photograph features a ridiculously large pixel count, which we can see if we start zooming into the picture. 3.2 gigapixels. A pixel count beyond comprehension. A definition so large that not even an array of 300 4K TVs are able to display the full-size image in its native resolution. And no, this is not a composite set of images even though it may look like it. This is a single shot created with one camera system and a form factor, eclipsing the largest formats we know of. Yet this camera wasn't built to capture broccoli, but rather to gaze into the star fields of our universe. Welcome to our God Level Camera Series. Since the dawn of time, we have looked to the stars and wondered, what's out there? Over the centuries, we have constructed methods of peeling back the curtain of infinite space to see what lies out there in the distance, and it's absolutely insane where we have arrived today. Untold stories carried through space by light. The great historian of the cosmos. Technology has evolved over centuries, allowing us to look farther. A new telescope opens its eye and captures it all the objects that move, and those that flash, even those we cannot see with our eyes. Every few nights, it covers the sky, finding all that has changed. And within minutes, new glimmers of activity are carried around the Earth. What will you discover that no one has seen before? It's time to find out. Every factor relating to this god-level camera is mind-boggling and hard to wrap one's mind around. Besides the gigantic pixel count, the scale of the camera system itself, the extreme light sensitivity, and even the manufacturing and operation of this camera are all aspects that ought to be taken into account. But this camera telescope combination not only is absolutely groundbreaking, but it also has a rich history behind it. There are enormous ways to get pleasure in doing science. I've just come back from three spectacular nights and see things on my spectrum that I've never seen before. This is a very exciting time. So every, every day is really very exciting. I don't know what will come out of this. I don't know whether it will be major or minor, but it is enormous pleasure to, to see, um, see things you've never seen before and to attempt to understand them. The Vera Rubin Observatory is named after Dr. Vera Rubin, an astronomer from the Carnegie Institution. Her work provided the first evidence for the existence of dark matter. It's essentially said to compose up to at least 70% of all matter in the universe. Many at the time dismissed her findings. Even though this dark matter discovery was groundbreaking, Dr. Rubin never received a Nobel Prize for it, even though the discoverers of dark matter won a Nobel Prize in 2011. This was due to the typical struggle that women face in the field of science to receive the recognition and respect they deserved for discoveries. Dr. Rubin unfortunately died in 2016 without receiving proper recognition for her lifetime of work. So they named this observatory after her to finally preserve an honor her legacy, with the Foundation's outgoing director saying, the Rubin Observatory is expected to significantly advance what we know about dark matter and dark energy, so the Rubin name will have yet another way to inspire women and men eager to investigate. It's important for us to take a moment in these videos from time to time and recognize those instrumental in inspiring such creations as the observatory that will house this massive camera, and to give them credit that they oftentimes do not receive. <laughs> this camera system called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, or the LSST, 
is to be mounted into a humongous observatory, specifically in Chile, where it will peer into the sky and record snapshots of the observable universe for 10 years straight after installation in order to study the formation of the Milky Way, dark matter, and energy, our solar system, and also to keep an eye out for asteroids flying by our planet. I hope the guys over at the Vera Rubin Observatory purchased a few hard drives because the system will produce around 60 petabytes of data every day. That's 60,000 terabytes worth of images depicting a portion of the observable universe. We have an enormous amount of, of, of data. We badly need their help. We're astronomers. We're not, we're not database people, and we need uh, people to give us as much help as we, they, they can give us in, in manipulating this data. Now Google, the internet search engine giant, has joined the project to help organize all the information. We need to be able to store it in a, in a safe way that it, if something goes wrong we don't lose it. Uh, we need to be able to give people all over the world access to it in different ways. Amateur astronomers and lay people want different kinds of access than professional astronomers. The camera sensors are highly sensitive, the camera perceiving 20 billion galaxies in any given shot thanks to the sensor being able to resolve objects 100 million times dimmer than what our eyes can see. Speaking of our eyes, we can only observe about 5,000 to 10,000 stars with the naked eye. If our eyes were as sensitive as those sensors, we would be able to see a lit candle thousands of miles away. What's really unique about it is that it's designed to cover enormous amounts of sky. Uh, so LSST, a single picture from LSST will be 40 times the size of the full moon in the sky. If you imagine staring up at the sky and looking at the moon and then drawing a circle which is 40 times bigger, that's one picture of El from LSST, and we'll do that every 17 seconds. Uh, so in order to build a telescope which is capable of taking such a large picture, you need an unusual optical design. The mirrors have to be different than the way most telescopes in the world are, and the main thing you need is an enormous camera we will be building the biggest digital camera ever constructed. To make shooting easier, the camera will also be equipped with various filters in order to grant the photographer more options during the shoot. Depending on what's being photographed and what wavelengths of light are desirable for a photograph, enabling astronomers to shoot anywhere from ultraviolet to infrared images. To reduce noise and for the camera to operate optimally across the board, the sensor block needs to get cooled down to around negative 100 degrees Celsius or negative 148 degrees Fahrenheit. While the back end of the camera has to be somehow cooled during the operation as well. But what is a camera without a lens? And that's one interesting thing when it comes to this high resolution. You can have that high of pixel density and all that, but you have to have a lens that can resolve it. SLAC's God-level camera will be outfitted with an equally jaw-dropping glass designed by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, or LLNL for short. The camera will be able to even switch between lenses with three jumbo-sized optical lenses to choose from with one of those lenses being 5.1 feet in diameter, meaning that this particular lens might be the largest high-performance lens ever fabricated. A camera with specs like these must undoubtedly be incredibly expensive, and oh boy, expensive it is. The camera is part of a near billion dollar project to put an ultra powerful scope in a Chilean observatory. The 189 16 megapixel CCD sensors are split into groups of 21, which together have been named RAFs. Together with the RAFs, used for imaging, four additional rafts were installed which are not used for photography related jobs. These rafts had to be positioned precisely next to each other. The array of sensors ought to form as a flat of a focal plane as possible with only a hair's width of variance and the sensors should not touch each other as they can be easily damaged. If one of the rafts gets damaged, we would be looking at roughly three million dollars in damages. So the construction of the sensor block must have been especially anxiety inducing for the assembly crew. In order to reduce the chances of breaking something, practice rafts were used in order to demo the installation process to make sure that nothing goes wrong during the actual assembly. The biggest challenge though still lies before the SLAC, which would be shipping the camera to Chile, hauling the system up a mountain in the middle of nowhere and installing it without damaging anything. From here, there's still testing to be done, lots of it. And when the testing is completed, everything glass, that is the lens and the filters will be removed and packed separately. The whole thing will then be shipped to Chile sometime around May, where it will be reassembled 
and then installed inside the observatory. That will prove to be difficult as the camera system weighs around three tons and is as big as an SUV. Only after the transport is done, everyone can breathe a sigh of relief and get to taking pictures with this god-level camera. While most of us do not have roughly $168 million to spare on a cool camera like this, we can still enjoy the images taken with the LSST in their full glory. Soon enough, we can check out 3.2 gigapixel photographs from our universe over a website. Pretty much like we can already check out this image of broccoli we showcased in the beginning of the video. But what if you were interested in images of a much more terrestrial kind? Then check out the God Level Camera episode on this Duke Gigapixel camera that you probably have never heard about by clicking here.